All right, morning. Welcome to Navigating Junior Ice Hockey and Prep Schools. My name is Coach Palmasano, and I'm one of the head ice hockey recruiting coaches here at NCASA. Um, and as far as my background goes, just so you know, um, I went through the process. I was a goalie. I know, you know, Jake. Up, you know, you're one of my guys here. The other, the other at HRC for hockey is Greg. Um, but I went through the process. I went off and played two years of junior hockey, so I'm very familiar with it. And uh, also I've been here at NCSA the last three and a half years helping a lot of players get to that next level and recommending junior hockey or not recommending junior hockey. So that's going to go over here tonight. You know, why take that gap, talk a little bit about the differences of the NCAA versus the ACHA hockey. They're here both in the U.S. and Canada how to junior team, a little bit about prep schools, and some eligibility questions. If you do have questions, feel free to just uh, let me know in the chat box and or just wait till after the class, and uh, we'll make sure we get to them. But it should be about a 10 to 15-minute class and get you guys off to watch the, the second half of the first period of uh, the, the Cup uh, Stanley game tonight. So I played junior hockey and simply – you know, if you look at any roster, it is enough, um, you know, evidence or proof you must need junior hockey or prep school to play in the NCAA. Uh, so the link down here at the bottom, collegecommitments.com, if you've never been there, maybe try to save that into your browser. It's a good way. It sees where, you know, who commits where, you know, looking for, for guys at the NCAA level. Essentially, if you go to a you know Division One school's um, you know roster on the right hand side, you will see um, you know previous team or hometown, contact in BCHL, and you'll see like Omaha, USHL, uh, Lincoln, Green Bay. So all those are junior teams and where they recruit from. So of all these guys, Thomas um, or, or Keaton Thomas is probably the only true freshman. I mean, he could have played an extra year of the U.S. National Team Development Program, but for the most part, if you're not a, an elite national development program kid, you know, junior hockey is the, you know, the only way in where they recruit you um, at that level. At the three level, very similar. You, know, you see, like, Rochester Stars, you know, Huntsville, Springfield Picks, Portland Pirates, the Mar- Parks, go down South Shore, Chilliwack, um, but then you see a couple prep schools when you when you look at some Division three rosters and you know Dexter School, Proctor, Northwood. Um, so you have a, a few different options in that, but not going to see anyone coming right out of U18 AAA at the D3 level. It's a much older division, um, and you know you'll you'll see a couple of the prep school guys that will either do a repeat or a post-grad, but, you know, won't see too many true freshmen there. What are the benefits? And obviously it opens up more doors if you take the gap to play junior hockey. You know, if you want to play NCAA D1 or D3, you got to play juniors. Um, ACHA Division One is still very competitive, and you, know, you pretty much have to play juniors as well for that league. Take cap, however, you know, as much as I will say, you know, it, it will help, help. It does not guarantee you a spot at one of those levels. So um, it does allow you to develop mentally, physically, learn the time management skills. You can still take college courses or get a part-time job while you're playing junior hockey. And the top ACHA or club teams, you know, they're only going to recruit from junior hockey as well. You know, that's how competitive it is in today's game and just so you can see the options of uh, you know playing junior hockey or post grad versus going straight to hockey and it, it outnumbers it two to one yeah. so here are a few different tiers I know it's not as updated as I would like but tier one here in the US is the USHL makes up there's probably close to 60% now of division one rosters it's the top junior league in the world World, um, NHL, Central Scouting, a lot of the guys that go into this league are, have college commitments. Uh, it's just important to, to keep in touch that 
there's only a very few people that can play at this level. We had eight players drafted this past um, draft into the USHL, which was pretty exciting, though. Best league here in the U.S., Tier 2, is the NAHL or the NCDC. Uh, but the NA, you can see it sent 164 players at D1 schools in the 14-15 season. I think it had about 160, 170 this past season. So, you know, pretty consistent number. You know, less than 12% of Division I rosters are made up of NAHL players. And the newest Tier 1 league, the USPHL, just launched the NCDC. And they're actually having a draft currently as we speak. Um, so it's it's another very, very strong league. And ultimately, what you need to know about these two leagues um, or tiers that it's free to play in, ice time's free, you know, equipment's free. Uh, at the Tier 2 level, you might have to pay a small fee for billeting, but it really depends on the team. The tier is Tier 3 or pay to play. Uh, they're considered stepping stone leagues, and there are a cost um, associated with them. It can range from 7000 all the way upwards of $15,000 a year. So you know, I'd recommend it for everyone, but you know, it's still really good hockey. You can see the EHL moved on 35 players to play Division One. The USPHL moved on 65 players to play Division One. you know, and a handful to the D3, um, respectively. So it is... You know, you go and light it up. You know, it opens up Division Three, uh, and that's why you know, and that's what you're hoping for to try to play at the, the top level possible. Um, at the tier three level, it is broken up into different uh, you know divisions. You have Premier and Elite. Empire doesn't exist anymore with um, with the format. So you know, if you're you know talking with the coach. And they say, you know, we want you for the elite. That means that it's it's the bottom of the tier three. You know, say we want you for the Premier League, then that's the top of the tier three league, and and it's not a bad option. These tiers are a little, little bit different. Um, it's broken up into two leagues: the CHL, and you know, if you want to play college hockey in the NCAA, you can't play in the CHL. That's like the OHL, the Western Hockey League, or the Q. Um, you can get drafted. You can go to the skates. Uh, if you do have questions on those in the 40-hour rule, we can go on more one-off basis. But for the most part, um, I don't think we have any Canadians in this class right now. Uh, but CJHL is the best chance to, to get noticed. The BCHL is top league in Canada um, as far as college commitments go. You see 121 in between the BCHL, the NAHL, and the USHL makes up about 75% of Division One rosters, so a big chunk. Uh, the OJHL, the CCHL, you know, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta, you know, they all have a lot of college commitments, whether it's Division One, Division Three, Canadian international schools, um, it's important to look at those as far as exposure, and we can help you out with those. USHL, this is how, or in the USA, this is how I, I rank them. Um, you know, USHL, top bottom there. In Canada, um, always up for debate, but, you know, just going off of college commitments alone or, you know, talking to scouts, you know, this is where they like to recruit a lot of their players from. How do you get on a junior team? We have over 600 teams in our system in database. So, you know, what can you do? You know, first off, playing at a high level, AAA, that gets in a lot of coach radars, especially early on. Um, you can send emails out to coaches so they know who you are, get on their email list, fill out their questionnaires on their, their websites. Uh, there's some camps, combines, showcases in the summertime to get noticed. There's some money makers out there, so that's what me and Greg are to help you out with. Um, like we said, talk with us if you have questions on that. That's what we're here for. Which teams? You know, just go to the Find Colleges tab and type in junior hockey, or 
if the um, you know JC or search for JC, all those just mean is uh, junior hockey and it fits in our system that way. Uh, any questions with that? So the big topic right now, open camps versus invite only. Open redraft camps, most of those are money makers. So I suggest going to those, or at least a lot of those. Um, in some cases it could be necessary, but you know, the way you can with those is coach communication. You're just getting a random email out of the blue, or if you talk to this guy for a while, um, your age, you know, are you a senior, you know, are you a freshman? Um, you know, all those kind of blend together into the generic emails. The invite only, you know, you'll be in touch with the coach, you know, several emails, maybe phone calls, talk with them after a game. Um, but those are the best chance of making the team is going to the invite only main camps. With prep schools, if academics come first, prep schools could be a really good option. You know, you would, most schools are going to want you to do a repeat year or a post-grad year. Uh, there is a heavy, steep cost to schools, so that it's definitely not for everyone. Um, there is some financial aid help and scholarship help, though. And prep schools are not created equal. The New England Prep League, you know, teams like Avon, Gunnery, Deerfield, um, those are some of the top teams in one of the top leagues. More Academy, Lake Forest Academy. They are you know, U18 AAA teams. They still play a really good schedule. They are a completely different breed as far as league and teams as those prep schools out east. Uh, you know, will you be on the top team? Like Avon could have a varsity A, varsity B, JV team. So if you're not on the top team, you're not going to be getting exposure anyway. And if you're just going there for school, that's fine. But if you want school in hockey, it's something to consider. And if you're going there for school or hockey, then going to a split season team is necessary. It's a short season out east. You know, they play about like 25 games, I think, in the prep league. So you're going to need to be on a U16 or U18 team uh, to get noticed. And some of the top teams are Yale or North Jersey Avs. The playing time. Um, seniority is a huge factor. So if you're a first-year guy, you know, you're probably not going to play much. You know, if you're a junior, sophomore on the top team, you're probably going to play too much. So, you know, seniority, age does play a factor in who those coaches play. And it's just important to keep that in mind. Going to eligibility questions, the average gap to play in hockey is about two years. You take college courses, but you must be um, or take less than 12 credits per semester. Take 12 or more deems you ineligible. If you play, if you're paid to play, like in the CHL, like in the OHL, um, then you can't play in the NCAA. D3 is a little bit different, but for the most part, uh, you have to have the same grades, get into the school, and you can't be paid to play. So I'll stop the recording now and stick around for a few minutes to answer some questions. If you don't have any questions, feel free to take off and have a great night.